excited to be talking to you guys. I'm excited to see how sunburned my face got yesterday. We had a beautiful day here in Denver and I've been cooped up inside. So I went outside without any sunblock and it felt really good this morning getting sunburned. So the little weird things have been like sustaining us and I love it. I love it. So we're going to talk and then I'm going to go put some block on and go back outside. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I digress. We got real stuff to talk about today. I have Dustin Segura and Ethan Griesmer who are founding members of Lunches for Clinicians. These guys are based in Denver, but we're going to talk national scale and scope because these guys are out there hustling, getting food out to people. I really like your guys' mission, your model, and it's clear why you guys are stamping it out into other cities and people are contacting you guys because you guys are organized and got your shit together. And I love it. Restaurant people love that. We deal with uh, the nonprofit community a lot. And those that uh, spring into action and, and make it happen are the ones we appreciate because we have that same go-getter attitude. So I really like it. So let's start with, uh, as we love to, with why and who. I'm really interested in why this team came together because all of you work in different fields, came together to start this initiative, this effort that's now going national. Ethan, tell us a little bit about why it was important for this group to come together and, and to take on this really important and challenging mission. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Um, we're just a group of friends and we spend a lot of time hanging out together, you know, going out to bars and restaurants, getting in the community. As soon as the stay at home orders came into effect, uh, we all realized that we had a little bit of extra time on our hands. And uh, one of our buddies, Scott, actually put out the idea like, hey, we have some extra time. We have a great network. Let's sort of see what we can build and see what sort of impact we can have. So we had a little brainstorming session. We thought, hey, the healthcare workers on the front lines are going to get hit super hard. They're all going to be overworked. Uh, you know, every day it seems there's some story that's coming out about a shortage of personal protective equipment um, and just overall safety morale is down there. So we thought, what better way to you know, help support then try to raise some money and, you know, let's see if we can help one ICU COVID facing unit, get some lunches and put some smiles on their faces. So, um, my buddy Scott actually had a happy hour set up. We were all going to go to Los Chingones downtown and, uh, you know, drink margarines and tacos. Well, all of a sudden the restaurants were closed. So we set up this big zoom meeting, about 30 or 40 people on there in and out. And we decided to let everyone know about this initiative that we were going to do. And then we also started to raise money during that initiative. And um, so we were throwing out different ideas like, hey, uh, you know, 20 bucks to donate if you'll run outside and do a snow angel, you know, in the yard. And the momentum just kind of started to build. You know, we sort of let our immediate friend group know what we were doing. And they really helped pave the way and spread the word out to the community. And it really jump started this whole process. That's unbelievable. I I love that. I love how organically that started. I love it just was like, go run out in the snow. It, it felt very much like when you said that, it was like the ALS ice bucket challenge where you just like throw yeah, it out there, exactly. challenge your friends, and then all of a sudden you like have something. And so I'm very interested then you had something and now you had to do something. We'll talk about that a little bit. But Dustin, first, I want you to tell us a little bit about the who. Who it is that you're you're trying to serve and, and who it yeah. is that you're – connected with that maybe you were never connected with before because of this effort? Yeah, uh, you know, we actually went through a few iterations of uh, people that we could provide the most um, uh, impact to. Uh, my initial thought was, hey, there's a high risk group of people uh, that don't have the means to go get their own, uh, their own food or their own groceries. And while we wanted to, to, you know, kind of appease everybody, we had to really bob and weave into this new regulation that was coming down, these stay at home orders and realize, you know, we didn't really want to be putting ourselves out there, uh, going to pick up groceries, going to actually touch stuff and then hand it off to somebody who's, who's high risk. Uh, so we, we all kind of came uh, across the idea of, you know what, the clinicians, uh, the, the people who are in these high risk COVID units are best um, equipped to accept something, right? They know how to go through sanitary procedures. They're washing their hands constantly. They, they've got personal protective equipment. Uh, and 
we're going to watch potentially some of our local Denver restaurants, places that we love, maybe never open their doors again. So how do we go about bridging the gap between these two people? How do we uh, continue to fund these restaurants that, that we love, uh, fund those, these restaurants that we want to see their patios open come May, June, uh, and, and go hang out, and then also take what they're capable of doing best in the sanitary kitchen, individually wrapping meals and getting it uh, getting it to the clinicians that are that are on the front lines. So the who naturally came out. Um, again, we all have, you know, I have two parents that are uh, uh, in the age range that's high risk, one's diabetic. I would love nothing more than to ensure that they make it through this whole thing without being impacted. But uh, that's not something that we personally want to step in the line of, you know, there's just too much risk there. So I think bridging the gap between closed door restaurants, local restaurants, and then our local heroes um, that just naturally uh, came out over time. Uh, I love that you say that. We we call them unsung hospitality heroes in, in what we do at Best Serve because yeah. people in the in the trenches just like grinding and making stuff happen. And so I appreciate that a lot because just putting a few more people to work makes a big difference. And the fact right. that the fact that you're connecting the dots and also making it financially viable. So let's talk about maybe the mechanics of it a little bit, how it actually works, uh, because you guys are actually purchasing meals from restaurants. And a lot of times they'll give you bulk deals and stuff, but you're supporting them financially, which I think is important. A lot of restaurants are suffering financially, yet there's such a giving spirit that so many restaurants are still donating food and their time and giving a lot of that away for free, which is also very valuable and important and altruistic and in the nature and DNA of people in hospitality. We're here to serve. Yet you found a, a way to make it also fiscally responsible, which is why I think you were see, you're seeing the success of launching in other cities. So maybe touch on the mechanics of how you're actually bringing that product to the clinicians. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate because it's, uh, a lot of the, the restaurants who are adapting by doing takeout or delivery uh, or delivering alcohol as part of uh, uh, part of their new kind of business model, I, I think it's it's great to see that. But we, I can't even imagine with such small margins, like how how much impact uh, this is happening. Uh, this is having on them. So our our how you know how we're making this work is we've got a great team of people. Uh, you know, Ethan's obviously uh, doing a lot of the restaurant connectivity. Uh, we have another teammate uh, named Megan who's doing a lot of our PR and social media. Uh, it really is just leveraging our our network. It's leveraging that that group of donors, um, our immediate network to say, hey, who do you know? Uh, who do you know both within the health system and then who do you also know in the service industry uh, that we can at least get the conversation going, right? I think we have a goal of keeping uh, a specific dollar amount per clinician, uh, uh, per clinician per meal in our head. So we're not trying to go to these restaurants and say, hey, give us a deal. We're just trying to say, hey, who do you know at a specific restaurant group? Who do you know at a specific local restaurant that can actually uh, produce large amounts of meals in a sanitary kitchen and go through individually wrapping with individual utensils? Um, and, and it varies from from restaurant to restaurant. Some are a little bit more uh, a little bit more built for for mass orders all at once. And some of the local ones that we love that we, again, know that might not uh, be able to open their doors again are adapting their kitchens, they're adapting their, their workflow to us. Uh, I think Dio Mio, for example, uh, shut down their kitchen for a night just to help us feed uh, Denver Health, which is, yeah. uh, I, I mean, we can't say thank you enough to that type of stuff. Uh, that's not our intent is to push, you know, so much they close to the rest of the public, but uh, at the same time, it's like if your kitchen's built for that and uh, capable of of kind of handing off 160 meals at a time, we absolutely want to partner with you. We absolutely want to uh, give you the money that we're raising and then go feed the clinicians that, that we want. Amazing. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it varies. A, sorry, go ahead. E. So, well, Ethan, I, I want to get to restaurants because I just got really excited in, in hearing yeah. Dio Mio yeah. and, you know, Alex and his team are unbelievable. It, the talent is unbelievable. Those pastas, amazing, delicious. Um, and the fact that they're so willing to adapt and just find a way to support and shut down for a night. I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? And then, Ethan, talk about that a little bit. Just like the restaurants. Let's let's gush over the restaurants and how much 
that these unsung hospitality heroes are stepping up in a way that it look, it'd be easy to shrink away from this and just say, fuck it and close the doors because yeah. people have been, the fact that they're out there, they keep grinding, they're hustling two, three, four, five more people get to work because you guys are bringing some, some money to the table to then support something that they would do again on their own for free. Talk about the restaurants a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's just this whole thing with the restaurants just ended up being the perfect marriage of a way to funnel the generosity that our community is is pouring on to our group, Lunches for Clinicians, being able to funnel that through the restaurants into the, the hospitals. It's sort of like a two birds with one stone concept. You know, a lot of these restaurants we've been working with are owners that we've built relationships with just by going in to the restaurants and, and eating there. And, you know, these, these guys and gals are in the restaurant and they're busting their ass every single day. And, you know, they've come up and said hi to us because they see us because we're regulars. And then, you know, we reach out to them sort of on a whim during this crazy crisis and they're willing to drop what they're doing and, and help us, which is amazing. You know, um, it's just been really like overwhelming the amount of support we've gotten through this project. And we wouldn't be able to do it without our restaurant partners. It, it just wouldn't be possible. So we mentioned Dio Mio, the Hop Alley. I know they're partnered with you. Yeah. Tom, Sean, they're amazing guys. Uh, we got Levin uh, is doing an order right now, actually. They're getting uh, meals together. They're putting 200 meals together for the Rocky Mountain Regional VA out in Aurora. Um, we've got support from Denver awesome. Biscuit Company, One Fold, uh, Bruto, El Taco de Mexico, recent James Beard award-winning El Taco de Mexico. Um, daughter Ty. I mean, it's just, it's been unbelievable. I mean, the, it seems like restaurants are lining up for this opportunity mm -hmm. to help. It's really great. Uh, was it Megan who's doing PR? She coached you up well to do the yeah. James Beard drop there. Was, <laughs> yeah. very good. Your, your PR game is strong, guys. Oh, uh, yeah. Megan, Megan's a She's a beast. Yeah. yeah. She's a beast. Yeah. I love it. Her, uh, I, I, yeah. Let's give her, uh, you guys her well. City Pine Collective. City Pine Collective. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. It, it, she's right. one of our friends who's got the, like the local business too. She's a she's a young entrepreneur uh, who's been impacted by this as well. So it made sense to kind of tap on her. She was dove right into this, and she's kind of the the ringleader right now. So she's a boss. We need we need leadership right now. So I, I love it that you guys, as a t as a collective, as a team, are bringing a lot of leadership right now and connecting the dots. The lines of infrastructure and communication are the biggest challenges that you see right now. There's people in need and there's people producing. It's the connective tissue that a lot of times we're missing. And so, you know, again, appreciate you guys finding a way to be that in this moment. Uh, you mentioned uh, Levin Deli right now is making a bunch of meals. So let's talk about those numbers real quick. As far as the amount of meals you've produced, how how many meals are going out in any period of time? Give us a little idea of the scope and size of it. Yeah, uh, so I think to date we're um, approaching 600, uh, 1600 meals served uh, between Levin and uh, One Fold. Um, literally, as soon as I wrap this podcast, I run across the street to One Fold and go deliver another. Uh, another uh, set of meals. I think we're doing 350 today, and our runway for the next week or so um, is another 350 meals. So we'll be pushing um, math uh, 2,100 meals uh, in the span of three weeks, um, which is which is awesome. That's yeah, great. That's unbelievable. So I just threw the uh, uh, email address up for if people are interested in getting connected. So that email address is for restaurants or potentially anybody in the healthcare system to get connected with you guys, to have a conversation about getting involved on either side of that equation. Is that correct? Yep. Our Facebook okay. group is also a great channel. Uh, just lunches for clinicians on Facebook, a great okay. channel where it's sort of a, we're building a community of people that are sharing ideas um, and helping connect us. A lot of these, connections we made in the hospitals are through those social channels of people just saying, Hey, I work at Denver health and I know so-and-so would you like me to connect you guys? And they've really helped expedite our process. It's really good. This, the talk about connective tissue, but like 
the web that's coming out of this is super interesting. All of a sudden, just you ask and you communicate and you say, hey, here's what we're doing. You put that good out there and people are just, they're like clamoring to be involved with something that's putting some positivity and having an impact out there. So I'm, I'm not surprised at all, which brings me to what I thought was really fascinating. And actually, when we first started going back and forth, I thought you guys were in St. Louis because the first like thing I clicked on somehow was uh, talking about St. Louis. And I was like, oh, this is really awesome because a handful of people from St. Louis have reached out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see the Cardinals. I got my yeah. Dodgers hat over here somewhere. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I got my Cubs mug. Where's my oh, Cubs man. Mug? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get into a baseball debate for sure. So, uh, so I thought you guys were in St. Louis. I was like, that's that's awesome. I was really interested in that. I was like, but wait, but you guys are in St. Louis, but you guys are actually in Denver. And so it took me a minute to wrap my head around it. And then you said, actually, we're in eight cities now. And you guys sent me over some of the numbers that of money that you guys have raised, like impressive, like very, very impressive. I was really excited. So talk about kind of how now this model is able to be stamped out kind of nationally and, and why the cities that you've chosen or that have chosen you that you're in right now. So maybe touch on that a little bit. Yeah, well, um, we had a bunch of folks reaching out to us through the social channels that wanted yeah. to see how we could get involved. Yeah. And, you know, with Denver, we have five or six really strong team members and we don't need too many cooks in the kitchen. But there was a lot of cities that were like, hey, how do I do this in St. Louis? How do I do this in Cleveland, in Nashville? So um, one of our guys, Scott, actually put together an onboarding program where we took our blueprint and kind of our process and what we did to get from idea to actually delivering meals and just gave it to these cities. So um, St. Louis is one example that's really taken off. And um, I think they just eclipsed $15,000 this morning or last night. Um, and they've been featured on a few news stations. They're actually getting involved with a few apparel companies as well in town that are making masks uh, for folks. Like that. Um, and it's really been encouraging to see folks just take this idea and run with it and make it work in their own city. Um, I think, Dustin, I think you got the specific numbers on what cities have done what so far, but we're we're aiming for a goal of raising $100,000 through the Lunches for Clinicians family. As a whole between the cities yeah. or each mm -hmm. city to raise 100000 Yeah, as a whole. As a whole. And you're pretty close. So the, the number you guys sent over was 88.5. So you guys are going to have to set that bar pretty quickly. I like that. <laughs> That's a good problem to yeah. have. Uh, yeah, Dustin, will you tell me, like, list, a, list off the specific cities and then maybe just touch on you know why that city potentially is uh, came about or is important or, or you stamped out this model there. Yeah, um, yeah, and so so like Ethan mentioned, uh, Scott's been pretty adamant about uh, holding a daily five p.m. meeting where uh, anyone interested. Uh, we I'm from, I'm from Chicago, so I've been reached out uh, by some friends there that uh, have said, "Hey, we see what you guys are doing. Your momentum is great." Um, uh, how do we do the same exact thing? How do we cookie cutter this uh, and, and uh, create a similar campaign in, in city of city XYZ? Um, so Scott's put together a great package. It's got some marketing material. It's got some social uh, media presence material. Um, it's got email templates. You know, pretty much everything that uh, you're 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 in need of to kind of take and then go run with it on your own. So. Uh, I think Ethan and Jack having such close ties in St. Louis made that happen. Um, Scott and another team member of ours, Don, uh, having close ties in like Nashville and Cleveland uh, made that happen. I mean, Ethan's younger brother, uh, Logan, is running uh, his own kind of campaign in Manhattan. Yep. Um, and then uh, another team member of ours has a close friend in, in White Plains, kind of the uh, the the you know, upstate New York area, who's, uh, who's running a, a successful campaign as well. Um, yeah, I saw White Plains in there when you had kind of, you know, major yeah. cities or, or mid-sized cities. And then White Plains had the second most money raised behind Denver. And I was like, they're up in White Plains. 
Yeah, you know, shout out to to Mike Niles. Um, he just has a, a great network. Really, like that's that's what we're finding out. Any one of these campaigns, whether it's uh, again getting into the hospitals, getting into the restaurants, or just raising money, uh, is we we're all cheerleaders. We're all the hype men for this, and it's really the network that we have that's contributing across all aspects, uh, whether it's dollars, meals, or or actual patient care. Right, so. Uh, Mike and uh, his firefighter uh, union just, you know, they're, they're, we got to watch out for them. We want to stay in the lead in Denver, but uh, they're, they're right behind us. Um, and again, yeah. we're all going to this hundred thousand dollar goal, which is great. But uh, like Denver's got to be first, right? We got to stay in first place. Oh man, I like that. Um, it's getting competitive. Dude, that's gonna a little bit, fire for sure. A little bit, a little bit. And, and just shout out to St. Louis, uh, Nashville. Uh, just. Just, just beat you guys, you know. I'm just saying, just okay, saying. Let's step it up. Let's go, uh, man. Right I, I can see those five PM meetings. Everyone uh, is wearing their colors, right? You got the the, the, yeah, the yeah. Chicago blue and the the St. Louis red, and uh, oh yeah, the Nashville sure. baby blue. I can see it. I like it. Oh, Dustin just dropped. Oh, we lost Dustin. Uh, we'll get him back. Yeah. Cool, cool story in, uh, in New York City, too. Shout out to my brother, Logan. He actually just served the midnight shift at uh, Elmhurst Hospital in New York City, which right. is like the epicenter of this pandemic, globally, yeah. at least in the United States and the Western Hemisphere. So huge shout out to him. They're doing great things over there as well. That's really awesome. So you have kind of the three prongs. You're raising money, you're connecting with restaurants, and then you're finding those those end consumer of delicious pasta dishes or whatever it might be. So talk about maybe where you need the most support in that kind of three prong approach. Where have you guys felt like you need a little more support? Is there one, one of those channels that we could help push a little bit more than the others? Yeah, I think the fundraising channel is the, it's the gasoline, it's the fuel to our engine. So going on the GoFundMe page, uh, if you have the means to donate, please uh, donate. That money is going directly to a small business and then directly into the mouths of one of the frontline healthcare workers. Um, and it is the food and the, the you know, the, the is, is really nice, but it's the smile. It's the little bit of light in a dark place that's really helping these folks get through this tough time. And it's only getting worse as far as we can tell. So anything you can do to donate, um, share it out within yep. your own networks um, and, you know, encourage your friends to do the same thing. That's the biggest help we could get right now. Yeah, I, I love it. So I shared the uh, the GoFundMe site. So get on there and let's get them to $100,000 quick so they can raise the bar again. And let's... Uh, uh, I want the hospitality industry, that's our people out there to do a couple things after watching this. Share it to your point, both funding of it, but just the connection to let's get this into more restaurants, let's get this in, into more cities. And so we have audiences all, all over the country and, and we want them to be a part of this. And so I feel like if they take a slightly proactive role in contacting you guys, contacting a handful of other restaurants because, you know, they got homies around town, like say, Hey, we have 10 restaurants. We've already talked about it. We're super interested in this. And here is five contacts of my mom works at the hospital in downtown Detroit. Like let's talk to them because the hospitality industry is real good at connecting people. It's literally what they yeah. do day in and day out yeah. face human interaction. And they're missing a lot of that interaction. And so I'm not surprised when you said the smile was maybe the most impactful thing, because even in these moments, people in the industry are still trying to find an opportunity for high touch hospitality. They can't do it in their restaurants and their dining rooms, but that emotion is still coming through. And that's clearly you guys are, are seeing that and feeling that and expressing that back out there. So I really love that. Uh, we'll get into some playlist items because we always love to hear what you guys are jamming to. I especially, Dustin, I know you're hitting the streets a lot and actually driving meals around and picking stuff up. So I got to know what you're listening to to keep you amped up. But before that, uh, uh, Dustin, any parting words? And then Ethan, I'll have you kind of give us some parting words as well. Just uh, any last thoughts, any last rah, rah, rah. Let's get the, uh, the rally, oh, the truth, call to action, anything. Yeah. Um, I, I think... I don't think it's any uh, any secret that 
you know, New York, New Jersey are in the midst of probably the worst week of this whole thing. Um, so whatever you guys can do, even if it's not through lunches for clinicians, um, figure out how to go support, uh, create a banner, uh, send some nice messages. Um, just, just do as much as you can to support, uh, those, those frontline clinicians, um, you know, walk outside in your neighborhood, go spend money locally, uh, keep the, keep the economy going as much as possible. Um, I, I think we'll all get through this sooner or later, but, uh, it's going to take a, it's going to take an army to, to continue moving these people. Um, so just be mindful that, uh, again, these guys are putting 12 plus hour days in and, uh, now more than ever, even in the past, you know, six weeks now more than ever, I think they're all in need of just a thank you, a smile, a, a good head nod. So I could not agree more. Just, I just imagine them opening, you know, you mentioned Dio Mio specifically, so we'll stick with them and their pasta because now I'm starving over here. <laughs> you open up, open up a simple like, I don't know, cacio pepe dish that they make, some handmade noodles. Like the pure moment of levity in that is like so compelling to me. And so I want people to really know like that can change somebody's day and yep. one day to change somebody's life. So it may just seem like you're dropping off a, a to-go box with some grease smeared on the side of it, yet it makes all the difference in the world. So I, I can appreciate that for sure. Uh, Ethan, anything else? Uh, let's keep this momentum going. I'm, I'm excited yeah. about you. Oh, yeah, yes. well, thank you so much for the opportunity and the platform to help uh, spread our message. You know, all of this came from uh, a, a tough time, a dark time. And the only thing that we wanted to do, our main goal was just to provide some light in this dark time. And we didn't have unlimited funds. We didn't have, um, you know, unlimited time. We just dedicated what we had and tried to put something together to bring a little bit of light into a dark place. So I would encourage anyone that's out there so hopefully feel empowered by this message to let them know that you can go out there and make a difference as well. If you just have a little bit of time, if you lean on your community and you ask for help, it's been overwhelming the amount of support we've gotten. And I know there's a ton of other Americans out there that are willing to pitch in and do just the same. So go out and try, reach out to us if you need some help. Uh, we have a lot of resources available. And um, you know, like Dustin said, go and spend it in the community, smile, say hi to somebody, uh, you know, tell somebody you love them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I've been practicing smiling with my eyes more as I'm out in the community with a face mask on. Yeah. And it's, it's so strange yet you can just sense people's emotions and there's a lot of fear in people's eyes a lot of times when they're walking around and just trying to be bright eyed is something that I've been focused on. And so it's, it's little, but it makes, I, I think it makes a difference. So, and Megan, another shout out. You got these boys coached up. Good. <laughs> you guys, you guys are pro. She does a, a, a yeah, standing, you know, weekly uh, show with you guys. That was really, really great. You guys did your group proud. I know that more cities are going to be hopping on mm -hmm. board. I'm committed. So we're going to follow up. You're going to hear a lot more from me personally about lunches for clinicians and as we've been connecting with more and more cities across the country with this platform, we're definitely going to be sharing that and motivating people in those cities and getting into those Facebook groups and sharing this information and finding two, three, four pillars in those communities that can help action take place. Because once you start that momentum, clearly it went quick and you guys had to figure it out. And you said, wait a minute, yeah. now we're the thing. let's go. And that's why people are gravitating towards it, because you guys have a clear strategy plan and a well-conceived message. Scott, Megan, you guys couldn't be here, but you guys are representing well today. All right, playlist items. Uh, Dustin, let's start with you. Think hard on this, man. Oh, man. Like, Levin Deli is, is crushing some 300 meals today in one fold. Like, what are you jamming, windows down, blaring as you're cruising around Denver, dropping off meals? No pressure. Yeah, I, I mean... I think I think Ethan already knows. As soon as I get in the car and start to go drop off, uh, Travis Scott sicko mode yeah, all, the way, <laughs> all the way, all the way, one hundred percent, no all doubt. Repeat. I just on repeat. Yeah, just one playlist, twelve songs, but it's all sicko mode. Uh, Dude. Now, <laughs> yeah, I mean, in all honesty, that is what I what I blast first. Uh, Gary Clark Jr., Anderson Pack, uh, Frank Ocean, Chance the Rapper. Um, Leon Bridges, uh, the new Thundercats, sick. 
Um, Tom York, oh man, Bony Bear, uh, James Blake. I'll go on and on. I, it's just all over. The world. But like, it starts. It starts with sicko mode. There's no other. There's no other right. song that you begin or end to play with than sicko mode. Sicko mode. I'm gonna make sure and yeah. get that linked up all on caps. Spotify so people can uh, jam out For sure. with you as they are supporting you while you are hitting the streets. I appreciate that. All right, Ethan, I don't know if the, sorry you have to follow that up. How do you follow up sicko mode? But what's keeping you yeah. motivated right now? Well, you can't follow sicko mode. Um, <laughs> but uh, if I had to, uh, Rufus DeSoul has been uh, has been awesome. I just, I can't get enough of them. If you haven't checked out their Joshua Tree uh, music video, it is super cool. That is perfect. You guys, I love the energy. You guys said you're hype, man. You guys are doing it well. For sure. So, so we're going to support, keep that momentum going in Denver to the point, like, let's make sure when you guys hit a hundred thousand, Denver is at the top of yeah. that list for sure. That hometown pride as we are all now transplants and, and Denver has adopted us all and uh, shown us a lot of love. So appreciate that. And I'm excited as well to see what St. Louis and white plains and the competitive nature that you guys have is why you guys are going to be successful. I'm, Maybe most interested, what you guys do coming out of this because you're going to have so much momentum. And once things come back to a little bit of equilibrium, we all, myself included, are going to have high expectations of you guys and the leadership moving forward. So, challenge thrown down to you guys. I really appreciate it. I know you guys are going to continue to do things. And I'm happy that we could spend even just a couple moments letting people know what you guys are doing. Totally. Challenge accepted. Thanks, Jensen. Appreciate Thanks, it, man. Jensen. All right, Appreciate you guys it. have a great day. Be safe out there. Cheers. Yes, love those guys' energy. I knew that was going to be a fun show. They are doing amazing work and just getting a group of friends together, like-minded, motivated, action-oriented, and having a plan and then being able to make that repeatable. I mean, it just speaks so much to what it takes to, you know, open a restaurant and run a restaurant and have that team mentality and that get shit done mentality. It's so why these guys are resonating, I think, with the culinary community, why people are rallying around them. And the fact that they're bringing the financial support into that infrastructure is really important as well. So it makes it much easier to get that thing going. As they said, they need funding. They're killing it, but they need more funding. So what I'm asking of everybody who watches this is get onto Lunches for Clinicians Facebook group so you can share that. Email them. Email address is in the comments. And let's get them Lunches for Clinicians at gmail.com. So email them if you are a restaurant, if you're a potential donor, if you have connections at hospitals, anything like that. Let's just reach out to these guys and start a dialogue because these guys will take your initiative and really put that into a strong system. I truly believe that. Uh, their GoFundMe is www.gofundme.com backslash F backslash lunches dash four dash clinicians. Hopefully you got that. Again, it's in the comments and we'll share that a few more times out there. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching this episode. Uh, tomorrow, I'm excited. I have Katie Osuna, who's a James Beard award-winning podcast host of Copper and Heat out in Oakland, California. She'll be on. And then actually, we have a second episode today. So if you want to tune back in about 25 minutes at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, I'm going to be talking with Mark Rubenstein, who is with On Call Restaurant Accounting. And we are going to unpack a little bit more of the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Plan, understanding what is happening there when it comes to restaurants being able to get some funding to put people back to work. So tune in for that as well. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for engaging. It's been a lot of fun over the last two weeks for me to just add any little bit of value into our community just by getting on and having a conversation with people. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I will continue to do it. Sunburnt face and all. It's a beautiful day out. Get out there. Smile at somebody like these guys said. And, and as always, eat something delicious. Cheers.